sisters to another edition of the Bible Speaks. My name is Brother Marcus. I'll be your teacher for the day. Reading for us is Brother Buck. Here at the Israel of God, we teach the Bible by subject and title. And today we're going to deal with the servants of God. All those who are truly walking in his light, which is his word, as well as those who may repent, acknowledge the error of their ways and turn to him. Okay, so today's title is Strangers and Pilgrims on the Earth. We're going to show you that this is a spiritual thing, right? We're going to show you that we're strangers because the world is walking on a course that is contrary to God and adverse to what thus saith the Lord. And we are going to show you also that this pilgrimage that we're on, right? Servants of God are on a pilgrimage. We are on a spiritual journey, right? Walking on that straight and narrow path that leads to life, even life eternal. So we're going to get right into it, brothers and sisters, again, servants of God, who are strangers and pilgrims on the earth. We're going to start this lesson off in Hebrews, the 11th chapter. When you get it, my brother, go ahead and read at verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called out into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance, obeyed. He went out, not knowing whether he went. Uh huh. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles that Isaac and Jacob the heirs with him of the same promise. So right off the bat, brothers and sisters, by faith, Abraham obeyed God. God told him to go somewhere. He didn't uh, make any, uh, uh, he didn't make no bones. He didn't uh, uh, hesitate. He went right out. And he sa it says he sojourned in the land of promise. That's very important, right? Mm -hmm. And he said that Isaac and Jacob, his seed, his lineage, which is also important, they were heirs with him of this same promise. Read verse 10, brother, what does it say? For he looked for a city which hath foundation whose builder and maker is God. So wait a minute. He left the land of his nativity, and then he ended up going into this strange country, right, this land of promise, but he's still looking for a city, yes, sir. okay, that who has foundation and whose builder and maker is God, brothers and sisters. He's looking for something in the future. We're going to show you this, but let's go back to Genesis, the 17th chapter, and look at this. Genesis chapter 17. We're going to take a look at when God told Abraham to do this. When you get it, my brother, pick it up at the verse 1. Go ahead. And when Abram was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Uh-huh. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. So God is going to make his covenant with Abram. His name has not been changed yet, but pay attention. Go ahead and read. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. So he reiterated the point, brothers and sisters. He made this covenant with Abraham, whose name is Abram at this time, and he says, you're going to be a father of many nations. Yes, so sir. watch this. Go ahead and read. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram. But what? But thy name shall be Abraham. Uh-huh. For a father of many nations have I made thee. So he gave him a name to fit his office. He said, a father of many nations yes, sir. I have made thee. So this implies that he's going to have a whole bunch of children, whether they are native or not. This implies that this is a spiritual thing, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And this is the physical side. Go ahead and read. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee. In their generations for an everlasting covenant. What kind of covenant, brother? For an everlasting covenant. Mm -hmm. To be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Go ahead. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee 
the land wherein thou art a stranger, mm -hmm. and, and all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. So he promised him the land of Canaan. That's where he went out and went to, right? Yes, that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob all dwelt there, right? And were heirs of this same promise. And this is going to be theirs for an everlasting possession. Brothers and sisters, let me make this quick point. The token of this covenant that God made with Abraham is the circumcision, which is also a covenant within itself. Why yes. is this important? Because all of Abraham's uh, children and everybody that was in his house, whether they were homeborn yes, or strangers, sir. right? They all had to get circumcised. Why is that important? Because if you go to Exodus, the 12th chapter, and you take a look at the Passover, it says no uncircumcised person can eat at the Passover. That's right. So who is the real Passover, brothers and sisters? Mm. None other than Jesus. Yes, you can go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. It will tell you that Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Mm -hmm. So if you couldn't get under the blood back then, and that Passover lamb represented Jesus, how can you get under the blood now if you're not circumcised? Man. That's the importance. In order to get under the blood, now you have to get baptized in the name of Jesus. So I just wanted to point those things out. We have lessons on the circumcision, Passover, and baptism. Check those out when you get time. But we're going to proceed, brother. He said that he was going to be that guy, right? That's right. So let's see if he just gave them this land and let them run amok and do whatever they wanted. Or did he give them some instructions that they had to follow? Let's go to Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter. Deuteronomy 10, we're going to pick this up at verse number 1. Go ahead and read. At that time the Lord said unto me, Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first, and come up unto me into the mount, and make thee an ark of wood. Uh -huh. And I will write on the tables of the words that were in the first tables which thou breakest, and thou shalt put them in the ark. So this is the time when the Lord had come down on Mount Sinai and spoke the Ten Commandments in person to the children of Israel. This is how important this was. But Moses saw those uh, uh, brothers and sisters down there. They had made a golden calf and were worshiping it and having a party and all this stuff. He got mad and he broke the first table. Mm -hmm. But let's skip down to verse 4 and continue. Go ahead. And he wrote on the tables, according to the first writing, the Ten Commandments. The what, brother? The Ten Commandments. Go ahead. Which the Lord spake unto you in the mount, out of the midst of the fire, in the day of the assembly. And the Lord gave them unto me. So he wrote the very same words, letting you know how important and permanent these things are, right? Yes, sir. Skip down to 11 and continue, brother. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, take thy journey before the people, that they may go in and possess the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give unto them. So we're talking promised land, right? But yes, he sir. gave them commandments first. Continue to read, brother. He's going to ask a question. Go ahead. And now Israel. What doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? Mm -hmm. But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, mm -hmm. and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Y'all see that, brothers and sisters? The first thing is fear. Fear is healthy. Yes, sir. Fear will keep you in check until you get some understanding, right? Just like with children and their parents. Mm -hmm. He said the first thing is fear me and walk in some of his ways. All, all his ways to love him. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments, correct? Yes, sir. And it said, with all your heart and with all your soul, that's all your mind and all your strength, because sometimes that's what it's going to take to serve this God. Yes, sir. But finish that. What does 13 say? To keep the commandments of the Lord mm -hmm. and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. And he's talking benefits in the flesh as well as later on, brothers and sisters. Yes, We're going to show you before we get out of this lesson. But let's go over to Acts chapter 7. Because we just read about when the children of Israel were in the wilderness and the Lord came down on the mountain and spoke the Ten Commandments, and then he ended up writing them twice on those tables of stone, right? Let's take a look and see what that assembly was called. Acts chapter 7. We're going to pick this up at verse 36. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. He brought them out. After that, he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea. And in the wilderness, 40 years. So we know what time frame we're talking about, and we're talking about the children of Israel, correct? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. This is that Moses, which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear. And Moses is speaking about none other than Jesus, but go ahead and read. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. That was in what? In the church in the wilderness. There was a church in the wilderness, brothers and yes, sisters? Yes, That's where it started. We have to understand that so we know where to get this word from. But continue to read. Finish that. With the angel which spake to him in Mount Sinai, 
and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. So they received the lively oracles to give unto us, brothers and sisters. That's none other than the Ten Commandments because they are ordained to life eternal. But let's go quickly to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. First Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, this is Paul's writing now. Yes, sir. We're going to see about this church that originated in the wilderness with the children of Israel. We're going to see down in the future, did anything change? First Thessalonians chapter 2, pick it up at verse 12, my brother. Go ahead. That ye will walk worthy of God, who hath called you into his kingdom and glory. And he called you into his kingdom and glory through his word, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Now pay attention, brothers and sisters. The apostle Paul is talking to the Gentiles, the Thessalonians. Mm -hmm. They are children of Japheth. Okay? Read verse 14. What does it say? For ye brethren, became followers of the churches of God, mm -hmm. which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. Which in Rome are in Christ Jesus. No, sir, in Judea. Brothers and sisters, the church is still with the children of Israel right, right here. Go ahead and read. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. So I just want to make that point. The instructions that God gave the children of Israel in the, in the wilderness when he started or originated his church, Nothing changed. And this is way after Jesus was already ascended back up to heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father. Paul is evangelizing to the Gentiles. Yes, sir. Right? Romans are Gentiles, right? Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, that's the only group of Gentiles that he had to warn not to try to usurp the authority of the church. But I just wanted to point that out because it's going to be important as we proceed. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 11, brother. Let's look at something else. Hebrews 11, and this time, pick it up at 13, because something happened. Verse 13, go ahead and read. These all died in faith, not having received the promises. Wait a minute, they died yes, but sir. in faith, so that means they were believing, but they didn't receive no promises? No, sir. So, so much for going to heaven after you die. <laughs> we know that that ain't the promise, brothers and sisters. We're going to read some of them later, but... If that was, by chance, the promise, it said they died and they hadn't received none, right? Yes, sir. Keep reading. But having seen them afar off uh -huh. and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So these faithful brothers and sisters that died, they understood that they weren't going to get the promises right away, but they saw them afar off. That yes, implies sir. that they're expecting something at a later time, even mm -hmm. though they did, right? Yes, sir. Continue to read, my brother. For well, they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Didn't Abraham go into the land of Canaan already? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. And we're going to show you also, this is a spiritual thing. Keep reading. But now they desire a better country. Mm -hmm. That is, and heavenly. Not that we go in there to get it. It's going to come down to us. We're going to show you all that. Go ahead. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Uh-huh. For he hath prepared for them a city. Brothers and sisters, this is speaking about the kingdom of the Father that's going to come down. It's been prepared for man all alone. But man dropped the ball in the Garden of Eden, and now we have to go about a roundabout way of getting there. But this is pointing to the coming of the kingdom of the Father, okay? Mm -hmm. But let's continue, brother, because we need to find out what happened? Because it said they were believers, but they died, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Let's take a look and see where man come from, because they said people that declare these things say that they're strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Yeah. How can we be strangers and we live on the earth and we're going to see where <laughs> we come from, right? All right? That wouldn't make any sense. But let's pick this up. We're going to read one verse in chapter 2, Genesis 2, chapter 7. Go ahead. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. He formed man of what? Of the dust of the ground. That's the earth, isn't it? Yes, sir. Go ahead and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So, brothers and sisters, we don't have a soul inside of us. We are the soul. Mm -hmm. We were dead souls until God breathed that breath of life in us, and then we became living souls. Is that correct? Amen. Let's go straight over to chapter 3 because something happened. 
God brought forth the woman. She talked to Satan. She took that conversation back to Adam. Mm -hmm. He accepted it, and God passed sentence on this man. Chapter 3, pick it up at 17, my brother. Go ahead and read that. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, mm -hmm. and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, mm -hmm. Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. So he cursed the very ground from which the man was taken. In other words, it's not going to yield his strength anymore. But skip down to 19. What else does it say? In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. Now you got to work hard for a living. You can't just pick no peaches and stuff off the tree, right? That's it right. It said, in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread until when, my brother? Till thou return unto the ground. Until I rapture you off to heaven. Till thou return unto the ground. Till I bring you up to the sweet by and by. Till you return unto the ground. So until you return to the ground, you're going to work and you're going to die. Go ahead. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art. And it's a dust shalt thou return. That's pretty simple, isn't it, brothers and sisters? Yes, sir. But let's take a look and see if this had to be. Skip down. Read verse 22, my brother. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us mm -hmm. to know good and evil. So Satan didn't lie to the woman about that little part, but go ahead. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Unless he... Put forth his hand. Hang out. Listen to God just like he accepted those words of Satan. It said he could have taken of the tree of life. This is Jesus, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. It said, and eat, consume his words, and live how long, brother? Forever. Forever. So we didn't have to die. Adam's poor choice is what brought death on the table, brothers and sisters. Just wanted y'all to uh, uh, see that. But now, let's continue. Let's take a look at this life and this death. Let's, let's look yeah. at it a little bit more in depth. Let's go to Psalm, the 103rd chapter. All we have to do, brothers and sisters, is read this book to get some understanding. Yes, Lord. Psalm 103. Pick it up at the verse 13, my brother. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. They're that fear again, right? Yes, sir. Fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. He has compassion on those that fear him. Go ahead and read. For he knoweth our frame. Mm -hmm. He remembereth that we are dust. Oh, it says he knows our frame and he rem remembers that we are dust. That's because he created us, number one. And then guess what else? One of the members of the Godhead came in the flesh. He put it on. Yes, sir. He knows intimately all the things that we go through every day, brothers and sisters. But anyway, continue to read. As for man, his days are as grass. Mm -hmm. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. So just like one day the grass is green, next time you look up, it might be brown. Mm -hmm. One day you see a flower and it's full bloom, all colorful and everything. Next day you look at it, it might be wilted over. But go ahead and read. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone. Uh huh. And the place thereof shall know it no more. So just like us in this life, the throes of life, things that may happen by chance, accidents, whatever. Things happen to us, we live, we get old, and ultimately die if the Lord has not came the second time. But... Go ahead and read verse 17. What does it say? But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting mm -hmm. upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children. His mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. Yes, sir. Trying to let us know something, y'all. Go ahead and read. To such as keep his covenant uh -huh. and to those that remember his commandments to do them. So you have to keep his covenant, which is his commandments, brothers and sisters. What does the Lord require of you? Right. Even though death is a part of his creation, like our pastor always say, it is merely an interruption in life. We're going to see that as we proceed through this lesson. Let's go to Ecclesiastes, the first chapter. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Pick it up at verse 1, brother. Go ahead. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. Vanity of vanity, all is vanity. So Solomon is trying to give us a perspective, brothers and sisters, because that's what kind of lesson this is. He's letting you know everything really is for nothing if you look at it, but he's yes, trying sir. to let us know what we should be focused on, what should be our highest priority. Go ahead and read. What profit hath the man of all his labor which he hath taken under the sun? So he said, what does it really benefit you? Everything you can find to put your hand to do in this life, what are the real benefits? Because we've seen the patriarchs died in faith, right? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh, 
but the earth abideth forever. So he's talking about the cycle of life here. People are born, they live, they die, another generation comes, and the cycle goes on and on, right? Yes, sir. But it says the earth abided forever because it was in, created to be inhabited forever. That's we go right. see that. But let's continue. Let's turn right over to Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter. Pick it up at verse 1, my brother. When you get it, go ahead. For all this I considered in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise, and their works are in the hand of God. Uh -huh. No man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before them. Go ahead and read. All things come alike to all. Uh -huh. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, uh -huh. to the good and to the clean and to the unclean, mm -hmm. to him that sacrifices and to him that sacrifices not. As is the good, so is the sinner. And he that sweareth as he that feareth and oath. So he said, all things come alike to all. Like I said, the righteous suffer accidents just like the wicked. Yes, sir. So he's trying to give us perspective, brothers and sisters. Read verse 3, sir. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun. Man, I want to know what that is. Go ahead. That there is one event unto all. One event to every man. Go ahead. Yeah. Also, the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. Mm -hmm. And the madness is in their heart while they live. Uh-huh. And after that, they go to the dead. After that, they go where, my brother? They go to the dead. Are you reading that correctly? Yes, sir. Brothers and sisters, it is appointed unto man once to die. This is the death sentence that the Lord passed on this man for disobedience. Yes, sir. So it says their hearts is full of evil and madness while they live. That's why we need God's commandments. We need his instructions. That's right, So we can bro. follow that spirit and be right. But it says after that, they go to the dead. Brothers and sisters, Please call the number that will appear at the bottom of your screen. A brother will be able to answer any biblical question that you may have according to the scriptures. Please, we welcome those questions. Well, let's continue, brother. Let's go to Revelation chapter 2 because it said they all died in faith. They had not received the promises, right? Mm-hmm. So what we're going to do is just take a look at some of these promises. And brothers and sisters, we have a lesson called the seven promises of God, which are one. Check that out at your convenience. But we're just going to skim through some of these, and we're going to see if going to heaven is listed anywhere <laughs> in these list of promises, right? We're going to start this. Revelation chapter 2, we're going to read verse 7. This is the angel, which is the spirit, giving this message to all of the churches of God, right? Verse 7, what that say? He that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. Uh -huh. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, uh -huh. which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So first thing is he said to him that overcometh. This is a common theme that we're going to read. You have to overcome your own lust. You have mm -hmm. to overcome this wicked world. Yes, and you sir. have to overcome the influence of Satan the devil and all his minions, right? Yes, sir. But it said to him that overcome will I give to eat of the tree of life. We just qualified in the garden that that was Jesus, right? Yes, sir. Skip down to verse 11. What that say, brother? He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Hmm, the second death. Mm. Again, man is appointed one time to die, but if your works ain't right, brothers and sisters, you may be hurt of the second death. Mm. That is the lake of fire, an everlasting punishment. Mm. We don't want to be bothered with that, right? Skip Yo, down son. to verse 17, man. What that say? He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the hidden manna. Jesus said he was the true bread from heaven, right? Yes, sir. Go ahead. And will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Brothers and sisters, that name written in stone is a symbol of permanency. Yes, sir. Just like the commandments were written in stone twice. Mm -hmm. That's permanency. That means you're going to be around forever. Right? Yes, sir. Skip down to verse 26. What that one say? And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nation. Brothers and sisters, these works are according to the commandments of God, and it said he will give this individual power over the nations. Again, check out that lesson. You and I, the saints, will be rulers with Christ yeah. in his kingdom. We are going to rule this earth with him. That's what this is implying. Let's go right over to the third chapter. Pick it up at verse 5, brother. What does it say? He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, 
And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. Out of what, brother? Out of the book of life. God has a book of life? Yes, sir. Brothers and sisters, it's also called the book of remembrance. Go ahead and read. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. If your name is in this book, you are a shoe in for the kingdom of God, brothers and sisters. Skip down to 12. What that say? Because I'm still right, waiting on this heaven promise. <laughs> I'm still waiting for it. Skip down to 12. What it say? Him that overcometh. Will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, mm -hmm. and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, mm -hmm. which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. It's coming what, brother? Down out of heaven from my God. Go ahead. And I will write upon him my new name. Brothers and sisters, people don't understand that the kingdom of the Son has to come First, before the Father's kingdom, this new Jerusalem that's going to come down. Yes, sir. And in the Father's kingdom, we can read there is no temple. The Lamb and God Almighty are the temple of that. Yes, but sir. So this is talking the kingdom of the Son, even Jesus the Christ. He said, if you overcome, I will make you a pillar in the temple of my God. If you are a pillar in the temple, brothers and sisters, the temple is in the kingdom. <laughs> that means you are a permanent fixture in the kingdom of God, right? Yes, sir. That makes sense, don't it? Yeah. Where we at, bro? That was in the 12. Skip down to 21. What that say? To him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, mm -hmm. even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. And that's what Jesus is right now. When he ascended back to heaven, he sat down on the right hand of the father, but he's promising all the faithful, if you overcome, he's going to let you sit with him in his throne. That's right. And you can go and read what the angel told Mary. She said, you're going to have a son, you're going to call his name Jesus, and the Lord God is going to give him the throne of his father, David. Yes, sir. Brothers and sisters, that throne was in Jerusalem on the earth. So the Lord is going to allow you to sit with him in his throne on this earth if you overcome. So far, we're still right here on this planet, right? Yes, sir. Strangers and pilgrims on this earth. But let's go to Ephesians, the second chapter, my brother. Let's take a look at something. Ephesians chapter 2. Because we're going to show you exactly how we are strangers and how we are pilgrims on this very earth that we just showed. We come out of, right, brother? Yes, sir. Two and one. Go ahead. And you have he quickened who are dead in trespasses and sin. So that's simply saying that you've received this word and now you're walking in it. So you were once dead in trespasses and sins. Because when you break God's commandments, you are sinning, and the wages of sin is death. Yes, sir. But pay attention to verse 2, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. What that say? Wherein, in time past, ye walked according to the course of this world. You walked how, brother? According to the course of this world. According to the course of this world. So the majority of the people that are living in deception are walking according to the course of this world. That's right. But go ahead and read. According to the prince of the power of the air. Uh-huh. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. According to the prince of the power of the air. This is none other than Satan the devil, brothers yes, and sisters. Sir. He was kicked out of heaven, him and all of those fallen angels, and cast down to this earth. And his influence is very evident. It says the spirit of the uh, prince of the power of the air, right? Yes, sir. Look at the kind of uh, movies and TV shows that we see. All kind of abominable things are being presented, right? That's right. Listen to the music that's being played. All of these Satanic influences, right, and undertones mm -hmm. are evident when you read the Word of God and then you listen to and look at some of the stuff that's going in, on in the world. This, he said, in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, which is Satan the devil, and that is the spirit that works in all who disobey God. Right, bro. Right? So we're just trying to show you that servants of God are not walking to, according to the course of this world. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to show you. That's the pilgrimage, pilgrimage that we're on. We are on a spiritual journey, not walking according to the course of this world. That's right, bro. Let's go to Jeremiah 51. Let's take a look at some. Jeremiah chapter 51. When you get it, brother, pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon, and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me, a destroying wind. Mm -hmm. And I will send into Babylon fanners that shall fan her and shall empty her land. Mm -hmm. For in the day of trouble, 
They shall be against her round about. Now, brothers and sisters, this is not Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon. That kingdom uh, was inherited by Darius the Mede. There was mm -hmm. no fighting or no war or anything. His son died that night, and Darius the Median took over. Mm -hmm. Skip down to verse 6. What that say? Flee out of the midst of Babylon. Uh-huh. And deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. Mm -hmm. He will render to her a recompense. So he just gave his people a warning. He said, flee out of the midst of Babylon. But is he telling them to leave where they live? <laughs> or is he telling them something else so they won't be walking according to the course of this world? Right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. Mm -hmm. That all the earth drunken. Mm -hmm. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. Brothers and sisters, it said Babylon have been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. This thing looks good on the outside, mm -hmm. but inside is all kind of filthiness and abominable things that yes, are contrary so. to what thus said the Lord. And it said, all the earth has been made drunken. The mm -hmm. nations have been made drunk with her wine. You can go to Isaiah, the 29th chapter, start at verse 9. It will let you know. It says they are drunken, but... Uh, uh, not with wine. wine. They That's stagger right. not with strong drink. This isn't, ta isn't talking about a physical drunk from uh, Jack Daniels or whatever <laughs> the case may be, right? This is talking spiritually drunk Yeah. because of her bad doctrine, her bad teaching. Yes, Go ahead sir. and read, brother. Babylon is suddenly fallen uh -huh. and destroyed. Howl for her. Take balm for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. That lets you know she's in power, but at a certain time, she is going to be taken down. Let's go get another witness. Let's go to Revelation 18, brother. Because he said, flee out of the midst of her so that you won't be partakers of her sins or iniquity. Right. Let's see if we can get another witness here. Revelation 18, start at verse 1, my brother. Go ahead. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. He cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, mm -hmm. and has become the habitation of the devil, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. This time it said Babylon the great, didn't it? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Some nations. All nations. All nations. Go ahead. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Mm -hmm. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacy. So in other words, when it says the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, they have received and accepted her doctrine. Yeah. And it says that the merchants of the earth, the business people and all that, are waxed rich through the abundance of her delic delicacies. Brothers and sisters, some businesses, you know, they be uh, in the red all year. Mm -hmm. But then when that season come around, y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Not only do they make up for the losses that they've incurred up to that point, they end up making a profit. Yes, sir. All because of that false doctrine which has, which has nothing to do with the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, right? Yes, but go sir. ahead and read. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Do what? Come out of her, my people. Again, he's saying, come out of her, flee out of the midst of her, but he's not telling you to leave physically and go somewhere. Go ahead. That you be not partakers of her sin. Uh-huh. That you receive not of her plague. Because, again, the wages of sin is death, and everybody who's found on the wrong side of the Lord is going to suffer some plagues, brothers and sisters. He is going to exact on this earth. But go ahead and read. For her sins have reached unto heaven. And God have remembered her iniquity. Just like he said, his mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. <laughs> he said he remembered her iniquity, so they're yes, going to have to pay. Right? Yes, sir. So, brothers and sisters, what we're talking about is a spiritual exodus, right? In yes, your sir. mind. Don't conform to the uh, uh, doctrine and the things that this, uh, 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 um, basically this false religion and her influences are putting on the table. Because if you do, even though you might think it's, it's right and good, when you read the word of God, it's contrary. That's right, so he's bro. saying, come out of her. Don't be partakers of those things because if you do, you're going to be sinning against me. And if you sin against me, I may have to get you at the end of the line. Mm. That's what this is saying, brothers and sisters. And we want to circumvent that. Yes, but so. let's go to St. John 17. Let's continue, brother. St. John, the 17th chapter. 
When you get it, brother, pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. Mm -hmm. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Eternal life. Y'all see that, brothers and sisters? The, the patriarchs died in faith, but Jesus is promising eternal life. Go ahead. And this is life eternal that thou may know thee, the only true God, mm -hmm. in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Skip down to verse 6 and continue, my brother. I have manifested thy name unto the men thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. They have kept thy word. They are not walking according to the course of this world, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Mm-hmm. I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, mm -hmm. and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Y'all see that, brothers and sisters? It's all about the word of God. Yes, sir. But Jesus is going to say something here, right, that might take some people aback. This is the <laughs> new book, right? Yes, it Read is. verse 9, brother. I pray for them. Uh-huh. I pray not for the world. But wait a minute. God so loved the world. Yeah. He's only praying for his disciples that the Father gave him out of the world. Mm -hmm. He said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Go ahead. But for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Skip down to verse 14, brother. Go ahead. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them. Oh, he's given them the word mm -hmm. that they walking according to, that spirit. Yeah. But it said, the world have hated them. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's how we strangers, brother yes, sir. and sister. We have been given the world, and the world hates you. Stop doing some of the things you used to do once you find out this truth and see how ostracized you are. That's right. That's what we're talking about here. Go ahead and read. Because they are not of the world, uh -huh. even as I am not of the world. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Brothers and sisters, we are physically here, but if you walk in, in, in God's light and his truth, we are in this world, but we're not of this world. Go ahead. We're seeking that uh, heavenly country like we read about in Hebrews 11. Go ahead. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, uh -huh. but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Uh -huh. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Go ahead. Sanctify them through thy truth. Wait a minute. Separate them through thy truth? Yes, sir. So servants of God are separate from the world through God's truth? Yes, sir. What is that, my brother? Thy word is truth. Simply put, brothers and sisters, the word of God is truth. When you subscribe to what thus saith the Lord, you are separated. Mm -hmm. You are set apart. That's what sanctification means. And it said the world will even hate you. That's right. That's like it hated our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, right? Yes, sir. Let's go get an example of some, some guys that were uh, strangers in the land that they lived in at the time. Let's go to Daniel, the third chapter. Daniel chapter 3. This is during the time of King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold, and he made a decree that at the time he plays certain music, that everybody who hears that music is supposed to bow down and worship this image, right? Yes, sir. Well, let's see what happened here. Let's read Daniel 3. Pick it up at verse 8, my brother. Go ahead. Wherefore, at that time, certain called dens came near and accused the Jews. Uh-huh. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Mm -hmm. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the golden image. So when they hear this music, they're supposed to fall down and worship. That's the king giving this order, right? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Man, that's a grave punishment, isn't it, yes, brother? Yes, it is. Go ahead and read verse 12. There are certain Jews, Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shagrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Brothers and sisters, if y'all read this on y'all own, everybody basically did what the king wanted. Mm -hmm. But it said there are certain Jews, again, these are members of the children of Israel, 
That same church that started in the wilderness that we read about later on was in Judea in Christ Jesus. It said, they have not regarded thee. Mm -hmm. They serve not your gods. Right. Nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. I wonder why, brother. Maybe it was something written in them instructions. What does the Lord require of thee? Maybe it was something in those instructions that prevented them from doing that. Okay? Mm -hmm. But they're facing this grave punishment, right? Yes, sir. Skip down to verse 16 and continue, my brother. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this manner. In other words, hey, we respect your office. We know you the king, you know. But this is what we have to say to you. Go ahead and read. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Uh -huh. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God, mm -hmm. nor worship the golden image which thou hast, which thou hast set up. Y'all see that, brothers and sisters? These brothers were living in the province of Babylon. Yeah. Their lives were at stake. They were threatened because they weren't going along with the status quo. They said, our God can save us. We don't know if he's going to do it or not. <laughs> but know this. Be it known unto you, O king, we are not going to serve your gods. That's right. We are not going to worship this image because it is against the commandments of the Lord. That's right. And we are even willing to give up our physical existence mm -hmm. in order to die right with the Lord. Right. Y'all can read the rest on your own. The Lord delivered them by the hand of an angel. But the point is, they were in Babylon. They were uh, 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 encouraged to follow the doctrine that this guy had put on the table, which would have caused them to sin against the Lord. But they preferred to walk in their faith and die than to preserve their life for just a little more season, right? Because they all dead now, right? They still waiting on that certain time that's coming up. We're going to read about that in a little bit. But let's go back to Hebrews 11. Servants of God, strangers and pilgrims on the earth, they refuse to serve his God right. or worship that image that he made with his hands. This time we're going to pick it up at 39. My brother, go ahead and read that. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, receive not the promise. Also, even though they died, they re obtained a good report, a good mm -hmm. record. Maybe that's how their name got in that book of life. Yes, Lord. Okay. And it said, they received not the promise. So they died. Again, it reiterated the point. They received not the promise. Go ahead and read. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Now, this is Paul talking about all the patriarchs that came before that have, you know, came and, and lived and died. He said, God has provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Mm -hmm. Only God is perfect, brothers and sisters. That's right. So I can say the same thing in this generation because this is all pointing to something that's going to happen at, a, at the same time. Right. Skip back up to 35. We're going to see what that's called. Go ahead. Women received their dead raised to life again. Mm -hmm. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, uh -huh. that they might obtain a better resurrection. Also, just like those brothers' lives was on the line, mm -hmm. they didn't accept deliverance. They went on it, and whatever, you know, it was going to be, it was going to be. Yes, sir. But it said that they might obtain a better resurrection. Yeah. Because, brothers and sisters, everybody who's ever lived and died is going to be raised and live again. The question is, are you going to be a, 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 fam a member of the family of God in the right side of his kingdom, Ooh. or are you going to be in that part you don't want to be in, which is called a lake burning with, with fire, right? Yeah. That's what it's talking about, a better resurrection. But let's go read something Job said. Let's go to Job 14. Because we read that they embraced those promises and they saw them afar off. Job chapter 14, when you get it, brother, pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days. And full of trouble. Man, do we know that. Go ahead. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. So this is just speaking to the temporary nature of this flesh and blood existence, brothers and sisters. But let's skip down to verse 10. What that say? But man dieth and wasteth away. Yeah, man giveth up the ghost. And where is he? Say man die. That breath, that spirit goes back to the Lord who gave it. He said, where is he? Go ahead and read. As the waters fell from the sea, and the flood decayeth and dryeth up, so man lieth down 
and riseth not mm -hmm. till the heavens be no more. Till when? Till the heavens be no more. Till the heavens be no more. Go ahead and read. They shall not awake nor be raised out of their sleep. Brothers and sisters, there's going to be signs in the heavens that's going to happen just one time with the sun, moon, and stars, and the heavens are going to roll together like a scroll. This is synonymous with the time that he's talking about. Man is not going to be raised until we see this happen. It said they won't be, uh, uh, they won't be awakened nor be raised out of their sleep. Now pay attention to what Job say here. Go ahead. Oh, that thou wouldest hide in me in the grave. Uh-huh. That thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be passed. Uh-huh. That thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. Brothers and sisters, Job's been dead a long time. Yes, Lord. But he said, hide me in the grave. He didn't say, take me to heaven. Mm -hmm. And he said, appoint me a set time and remember me. All the servants of God, all the prophets that he revealed his secrets to know about this set time in the future. Yeah. That's why they embraced those promises and said they saw him fall off. Because they know even though they were going to die, Lord had something good for him at the time appointed. Go ahead and read. If a man die, shall he live again? Yes, sir. Go ahead. All the days of my appointed time will I wait uh -huh. till my change come. And Job even knew that he went in the grave one way, a flesh and blood man, he's going to come out a spirit being, right? Yes, sir. He know that. Go ahead and read. Thou shalt call, and I will answer thee. Mm -hmm. Thou will have a desire to the work of thine hand. When that seventh trumpet blows, the Lord going to say, come up hither, and all the dead in Christ are going to be raised. Ain't that correct? Yes, sir. Let's go to St. John 6, brother. We just have a few more places, brothers and sisters. Amen. We are showing you that we are strangers through this word. We are not walking according to the course of this world, and we are on a pilgrimage. We are on a spiritual journey because we made that exodus, yeah. right? We've come out of this uh, wicked world in the ways thereof, right? St. John 6, pick it up at 37, my brother. What does it say? All that the Father gives me shall come to me. Mm-hmm. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. So you come to the Lord. He said, I in no wise will cast you out. But let's take a look at what he say here. Go ahead. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. So did y'all understand and know that Jesus was sent by the Father to do his will? That's right. To recover, redeem, and reconcile this man back to them? Yes. Go ahead and read. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me. What's that, bro? That of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, uh -huh. but should raise it up again at the last day. Oh, that's what Job was talking about, appoint me a set time and remember me. Yeah. God gave man so many days to exist in this flesh and blood. It said, as this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing. So all those that died in faith are not lost. Mm -hmm. They are dead, and just like Job, they waiting until they change come. Go ahead and read. And this is the will of him that sent me, uh -huh. that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, uh -huh. and I will raise him up at the last day. He reiterated the point. As long as you believe on the Son, he said, I'm going to give you everlasting life. When? When I raise you up at the last day. Isn't that correct, my brother? That's right. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. First Corinthians chapter 15, we're going to take a look at this process, right? We're talking resurrection, brothers and sisters. This is how the Lord is going to recover all those that have died in faith. That's why I said they saw those promises afar off, mm -hmm. right, and embraced them. So that means they disciplined themselves, right? Yes, sir. They conducted themselves according to what thus said the Lord. It didn't matter what was going on in the world. Right. Right. They conform to the image of the son of God. Yeah. Right. Say whoever believe on me going to have <laughs> everlasting life. Correct. Yes. sir. First Corinthians 15. My brother, we're going to read. Start reading at verse number 20. First Corinthians 15 chapter and verse 20. Go ahead. But now is Christ risen from the dead uh -huh. and become the first fruits of them that slept. So Christ was raised from the dead and he has become the first fruits of them that slept. In other words, of those that die. He is mm -hmm. the first one to wear this flesh and blood, right? That's it. To go in that ground, even though he was only there for a short space, three days and three nights. Mm -hmm. But when he came up, he was a spirit being. He was God. Even though he assumed his old office, he's letting us know he's the first fruits of them that slept, 
which implies there are more to come. Go ahead and read. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. So what is he talking about, brothers and sisters? By man, what man was that? That was Adam. When he disobeyed the commandment of God not to communicate with the uh, uh, tree of the knowledge of good and evil, mm -hmm. which he did through his wife, right? Yes, sir. What was the sentence that we read that God passed on this man? He passed yeah. death sentence on this man, right? Yes, sir. Because we read that we could have eaten and learned how to live forever, right? That's right. So it says, since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Jesus was born into the nation of Israel through Mary. He became the son of man. Yes, he sir. died and he was resurrected, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. For as in Adam all die, uh -huh. even so in Christ shall all be made alive. In Christ shall all be made alive. But how is that going to work out, brother? Go ahead and read. But every man in his own order, uh -huh. Christ the first fruit, uh -huh. afterward they that are Christ at his coming. It says every man in his own order, Christ yeah. the first fruits, then afterward they that are Christ. When, my brother? At his coming. Is Christ here? No, sir. So who is resurrected? Who's received the promise? No one. Nobody. They're still waiting, right? Just like Job said. Yeah. Where we at, bro? We so gotta... skip down to verse 50 and continue. Right. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither do of corruption inherit incorruption. Now this is talking about the Father's kingdom, just like Jesus told Nicodemus. In order to be born again, you have to be born of the water and yeah. of the spirit, right? That's right. You got to have that word. You got to walk in that word. And then at the time appointed, you're going to get your change, right? Yes, sir. So if you born again, like the pastor say, <laughs> I shouldn't be able to see you. And if you walk by me, I shouldn't be able to hit you upside the head and do you no harm, <laughs> right? So for all you that's saying you are born again, you don't understand. To be born again is a physical change, not that you've changed your mind. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's another lesson for another day. Go ahead and read, brother. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In other words, by the time the Lord come back, everybody ain't going to die. But you still got to make the change. Go ahead and read. In a moment, uh -huh. in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. At what trump? At the last trump. That's the seventh trumpet, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. For the trumpet shall sound, mm -hmm. and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Uh-huh. And we shall be changed. So everybody that's worthy of the promise is going to be God. That's what this is saying, y'all. Go ahead and read. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, uh -huh. and this mortal must put on immortality. Now, must is an absolute, isn't it, brother? Yes, it is. Again, in order to see the kingdom of God, talking about the kingdom of the Father, you must be born of the water, which is his word, and of the spirit. Yes. We must put on incorruption because this flesh and blood is corruptible. Mm -hmm. It gets old. It smells if you don't wash it enough. <laughs> it gets sick and dies, brothers yeah. and sisters. Go ahead and finish that. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Because death is the last enemy that Jesus is going to destroy, brothers and sisters. But let's go to the last place, Revelation chapter 21. Let's see if we got to go up to get any promise or, or, or not. Let's see what's going on here. Revelation chapter 21, put it, pick it up at verse 1, my brother. Go ahead and read. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Mm-hmm. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. So the Lord reworked this earth. Go ahead. And there was no more sea. Uh-huh. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. Doing what? Coming down from God out of heaven. Go ahead. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Uh-huh. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, mm -hmm. and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. God is coming down, brothers and sisters. Skip down to seven. What that say? You want verse four? Verse four. Go ahead and read. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. Again, the last enemy that the Lord is going to defeat is death. Now skip down to seven. What it say? He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Some things. All things. Whatever the Lord got when he came out the grave, we're going to get it too, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And I will be his God, 
and he shall be my son. Skip down to 10 and continue. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Ascending. Descending Coming out down, of heaven. Coming down, right? Yes, sir. Skip down to 12. What that say? And had a wall great and high, and had 12 gates, and at the gates 12 angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Brothers and sisters, Israel is God's church. You cannot get into the Father's kingdom unless you go through Israel. Mm -hmm. That is a spiritual message. You've got to deal with the same word that he sent to Israel because they are his priests. Right. Skip down to verse 14, brother. What that say? And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Wasn't the city that Abraham was looking for, didn't he say that that city had foundations? Yes, sir. Whose builder and maker was God that yes, he was sir. looking for? Brothers and sisters, this is what Abraham and all the patriarchs understood. This is what they were looking for. Yes, sir. They were looking for the real promised land that the, the land of Canaan was served as a prototype for. Mm -hmm. They were looking for the land of promise, even the kingdom of God, even the kingdom of the Father that's going to come down, descend out of heaven at the time appointed. This is what this is talking about, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. So through this lesson, we showed you that we are strangers. Servants of God are strangers in this earth because we're not walking according to the course of this world and all that bad doctrine that, that's in it. We have been sanctified or separated by the word of God, which is true. Yes, Lord. That's why we're strange. Like I say, don't stop going to these events and things that they have around these certain times of the year and see, <laughs> don't people start looking at you funny. But now we're reading the book and walking according to the word. Yeah. But they're going to say, man, you don't do Christmas? You don't celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, <laughs> on Easter? When the book say that Jesus was crucified in the middle of the week. Out of his own mouth, he said he was going to be in that grave three days and three nights, right? Right. So there's no way you can get three days and three nights from Good Friday, what they call, to Easter Sunday morning, right? No, so sir. So according to the word of God, Easter cannot be the resurrection of the Christ, right? That's right, brother. So just for an example, brothers and sisters, that's how we separated, and that we showed you also that we are pilgrims because we are on a spiritual journey. We have come out. We've made a spiritual exodus, right? Yes, sir. Out of, like I said, all this bad doctrine and teaching that's in the world, and we are on a spiritual journey. We are walking on that straight and narrow path that leads to life even eternal life. So I hope somebody got some edification out of this lesson. Thank you all for watching. Grace and peace in the mighty name of Jesus.